This is a video all about the instrument clusters on the early 107 SL. This is the instrument cluster here. And you can see that when the people who owned this car before tried to take it out, they ended up snapping the entire circuit board here. I imagine they're unable to get that fitting off. Um, and we're going to have to get a new one of these and a new circuit board. Now, just before you rush out and get one, it is important that these clusters are different on the earlier SLs to the later ones. They're also different depending on whether you've got a left-hand drive car in kilometres an hour or a right-hand drive car in miles per hour. But what I'm going to try and do is get a cluster from a non-107 SL and see if I can take the parts that I need, like the circuit board, and make it fit the 107 SL. And what we're going to try and do, I don't know how well you can see this, is the um, instrument cluster that we're going to buy has a clock here rather than the rev counter and a clock. But I don't think that matters because I think I'm just going to be able to take this gauge out of this cluster and put it into the other one. And I think that will all work, but we will soon find out. Now, for anybody who's got a later 107 SL, like the red 1983 SL over there, if you watched the um, instrument cluster video I did on that, you will notice that it's very different. It doesn't have these hard lines here attached to the back of the cluster. There, It's all electronic and there's vacuum lines, etc. So it is important that if you need a new cluster that you get the right one for your car that's actually going to fit. If you need to take your instrument cluster out it's important that you do this with two spanners a 10 mil spanner to hold the small nut and a 13 mil spanner to hold this once you've cracked that nut you should find that you can use your hands to undo the rest of it hopefully Oops. that is the oil pressure line and there's a good chance that it'll have oil in it when you take it out so make sure you've got a rag or something like that better still something to plug that with when you take it off in this particular case it doesn't matter too much because i don't think there's that much oil in this car our job today is to try and rebuild this instrument cluster here you can see that the previous owners of this car managed to break the circuit board whilst taking it out and what we're going to try and do is just replace that bit of circuit board with something that we've just bought off eBay. Now, whilst these are similar, they're not identical. And here's just a few differences. First of all, this is the one we bought on eBay. And you can see it has these Perspex pieces here, which don't exist on the um, instrument cluster that came with the car. The second thing is these instrument clusters are just push fit on the 107SL with this rubber band here and that rubber band is missing on this instrument cluster. Although this was advertised as fitting a 107SL, um, if you've ever had a 107SL you know that it doesn't have a clock there, it'll have a speedometer with a clock in the middle, plus it doesn't have all these pieces here so we're not actually going to use this piece here we're just going to take out the circuit board from here hopefully and transplant it into here that's my plan whether that works or not is a completely different question in theory all we need to do is take out these remaining bolts here unplug the wires these are just cable clips that keep these wires secure and these two things here that the wires are attached to are just bulbs so we should in theory be able to just take out this circuit board and all these wires in one go and just take out the same circuit board from there, transplant it and see how we go. We've just done undone four bolts and a few bolts around that cracked circuit board. And this piece comes out in its entirety together with those two light bulbs. Before we do anything else, we will take the opportunity to clean the inside of all of this, make sure there's no dust in there before we put it all back together. We'll have a go at cleaning that up before we put it back together. I can see on this um, here that these wires seem very tight to the extent it makes me wonder whether they actually, whether this has been replaced on here. I can also see that they, for some reason, cut this wire here and here. I don't know why, maybe there was a short circuit or something. I guess we'll soon find out. 
We also notice that on the car that we're doing, this piece is missing for some reason. And um, I don't know why, excuse me, mishmash, but we'll take that piece off first. That's held on with a long screw. So to get this off, we just got to undo one, two, three, four, five little bolts on the oops, and this one nut, which seems very loose. I wonder if that means that's broken underneath there. Got all those screws out, and this should, in theory, just lift. I'm going to do that off camera for not to lose that little washer. That should sit on there where there's that one nut. Okay, now the moment of truth. What is the number on there? 8841022. What's the number on here? 8841022 and that other number X16 120.7112. So these are the same circuit boards. Once again, you start to notice little things as soon as you take things to pieces. I can see that that there is broken. I don't know if we can fix that. The most important thing is that that circuit board actually looks to be exactly the same. All we need to do now is go back down to the garage and actually have a look at this gauge and see if the gauge from the car is in any better condition than this one here. Because we should, in theory, be able to just disconnect the gauge and swap them over if we need. Worth mentioning that the part numbers on these two speedos are different. 116542 This is a bit we just got off eBay. And this is the speedometer that came with the car. 116542801. And I suspect that you can't just interchange speedometers from different cars if they're different models. I don't know if I'm right in that. I mean, these look exactly the same shape, but I imagine that Possibly the engine size or the tyre size or stuff like that would make a difference to the, both the mileometer and possibly the speed as well. I don't know, maybe somebody could drop a comment, a line in the comments if they know more about this subject than I do. This is the fuel tank, temperature sensor and oil pressure gauge out of the red project car. This is what came with the car and you can see that the circuit board is all cracked. This is here what we bought off eBay, and I can see um, additionally that this center chrome trim is missing. I can also see that these are different colors. They're yellow, and that's orange. So what I think I may do is attempt to take this off the old circuit board and transport, transport it, transplant it onto the new circuit board. I'm not sure whether it works or whether it's damaged, but there's only one way to find out. The first thing we're gonna to have to do is remove these little needles. Um, and they're on there pretty tightly. So I'll show you a few methods of removing the needles, but there is a danger when you remove those needles that you pull the spindle right out of the gauge behind it. Now this is very important, regardless of whether you're dealing with an SL or any other car. If your needles have got pins here and here stopping the needle, you need to remove that pin first. It should just pull straight out and let this needle come to its natural resting point and when you put the needle back on, it needs to go in on exactly the same place, then get wound forward, and then you put the pin in. Otherwise, your um, dials won't be set up properly. That's the first point. And the second point is, my advice would be, before you try levering these off, I would put some um, good quality masking tape on where you're about to lever, so you, there's no danger at all that you scratch the paint. So we're gonna try getting this needle off first, and you have a number of methods you can Use the fork method and just lever, lever it up like so. You can use the two spoon method. That gives you equal pressure on both sides, lever it up. Or you can potentially, if you don't have any forks and spoons and you eat with your hands or whatever, you can possibly also use a pair of scissors and leave up like that. Um, I think I'm going to prefer the spoon method simply because it gives us equal pressure on both sides. So here goes. As I say, there's a chance that we could ruin this dial, but it's pretty ruined anyway. There we go. One down. Try this next one. Two down. We've got two of those. Um, needles out. Next up we're going to try and take this one here off. Now this one has got a pin here 
and you can see that that wants to travel much further back this way and we need to pull that pin out and let the needle travel to where it wants to travel we've got two options you can either just try and grab hold of that pin and pull it straight out you might damage the pin by doing that or you can possibly push the pin out from the back i think if you do go for the grab and pull method with a pair of pliers or something it's really important to wrap something around the metal face of the pliers or even some tape or something around here so you don't damage the pin so those pins do not want to come out and i don't want to risk pulling them with this set of mole grips so hard that I actually damage them in any way so i'm going to try plan b which is just to undo these screws here and move the whole dial around and let's see where that ends up and that may achieve exactly the same thing without having to pull the pins out so with these three screws out this is now free to move we've lined it up with the 15 bar on the oil pressure gauge and there's a tiny little mark on on this face here it's exactly halfway on that plastic bit there so we may just put a piece of tape there and mark that and then when we put the whole thing back together we'll pop that off when we put the whole thing back together we just need to remember to put this one on first line the disc up at an angle and then wind this back to where it um, should be this is now perfectly aligned on the 15 of the oil pressure and what i'm going to do is there's a tiny little mark there i'm going to mark that on there like so and then i'm just going to draw a line to follow the profile of the gauge and that should in theory allow us to put the thing back together properly okay here goes the last gauge now that last gauge the oil pressure gauge is different from the others it has a hollow shaft the other gauges are a needle pin i think Having got the needles off, this should now just lift off, revealing behind it the gauges. So once you've taken those two screws out, this whole plate lifts off like so. And in fact, this plate just clamps that gauge to the circuit board. Once you've taken those screws and that plate out, this circuit board actually plugs into the dials. It's a really clever system, but these little fittings here are actually plugs that plug into copper fittings on the dials like that so if you're very careful you could just lever that up similarly this in theory should you may need to get a flat blade screwdriver or something like that under there and just twist very gently but it should in theory just lever off like so you can be really careful you don't damage any of the runners and there you go so we should just be able to superimpose the new circuit board onto the dials from the actual car hopefully what is interesting is that these three um, gauges here all come off they're all easily removable from this black plastic backing so if any one of your gauges ever failed or you needed to replace it it would be a relatively simple matter just to undo a couple of screws here and here take the gauge out the reason for mentioning that is because on this here i can see that it was almost like someone's taken a hacksaw or something and tried to cut this off and that's no longer a flat face if you look at the gauge from the that we bought on ebay you can see that the profile there is different and I wonder if that means that when we come to um, screw the oil line onto here, it will no longer um, seal there. I guess we'll have to just find out. You can actually just unplug this entire gauge from the circuit board without having to take the needles off and get involved in all of that. All you need to do is undo these two screws here and these two screws there take that plate off and very carefully get a screwdriver between there or better still a plastic spatula of some description and just lever the gauges off the circuit board so if in our like in our case you've got a faulty circuit board and you just want to take the circuit board out you just take this circuit board and put your 
gauge on top. That's exactly what I'm going to attempt to do. Hopefully I don't break anything beyond repair. Interestingly enough, this particular um, gauge, I don't know if it's been off before, but it doesn't have the same lock washers that the other one has. So on the um, gauge that came with the car, you had a flat washer and then a lock washer on top of it. This one does not appear to be like that for some reason. Possibly because someone's had this apart before and ended up losing them. I don't know. As I say, you should do this with a plastic spatula, I think, so you don't damage the circuit board. Well, I don't happen to have a plastic spatula, so I'm just going to do it very carefully. That's how you separate the gauges from the circuit board. Be careful not to lose this gasket here. I'm going to take it off. It's not attached at all. I'm going to take it off and clean all the oil off this board, but do be careful not to lose it. So there you have it. That's how you disassemble the circuit board and these gauges, should you ever need to. Um, with the benefit of hindsight, of course, I did not need to remove the needles and this face to get this apart. Um, you can see here on the other one, I haven't needed to remove the face. However, you live and learn, and hopefully that will be useful for someone out there that wants to take off the needles, either to paint them or to repair them or to change this face. Just before I put this whole thing back together, if anybody out there is an expert in these matters and can tell me whether these gauges are interchangeable, I would be most grateful. I.e., does the oil pressure gauge on different cars, are they interchangeable? The um, fuel reading, is that interchangeable? I noticed this has got a little O stamped to it, whereas this one's got a little X stamped on it. So I don't know if they're interchangeable. If anybody does know that, please do let me know. I'm going to use the gauges that came with the car and we're going to put them on the circuit board. That will save us having to remove this little piece of silver here. We've already taken the needles off. They're all bright orange, so we won't have to get involved in swapping needles over. And if for some reason the oil pressure gauge leaks or one of those gauges doesn't work, we do have other gauges on this unit here that we can test if we need to. I've done up those four screws and connected the gauge to the circuit board. We just have to remember that we're going to put on the... Um, oil pressure sensor first. So we've lined this up like that. We've lined the needle up. Just have to press that down firmly. There is a very small bit of movement in here before you tighten the screws up. What you need to do is just make sure that those two pins are completely, those two pins there are completely central. Hopefully you'll have made a note of exactly where these were. When you took them off, this one was just on the edge of that red triangle. Once again, I'm just going to firmly press that on. Now, these two are exactly the same size. And this one, when we took it off, was just between the two zeros like that. I've reassembled this instrument cluster, just tidied up some of the rust. I spliced that one wire together that led to the indicator bulb. I don't know why that was cut. This wire here is still cut. But I think that is just, I'm not sure, that's just um, a light to illuminate the dashboard. So I'm just going to leave that cut for the time being. They may have cut that for some specific reason. We are missing um, two light bulbs here, but luckily these guys here, Euro, do actually supply the bulb holders. And I think possibly I've got some of these down at the garage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the um, main wiring loom in here and see if anything works. down in the garage and I'm intrigued to see what happens when we plug this wiring loom in. Um, this is the main wiring loom. This is for the uh, is that for the rev counter. That's for the clock. That is for the speedometer and that's our oil line there. But what we're really interested in is the electric. So let's try plugging that in and see what happens. So we do have a few light bulbs missing. This plug only fits in one way. I hope it's got long enough to very short plug, unfortunately. So I've connected the battery and I've plugged just the way it main and wiring loom into the back of that dash and let's see what happens if we turn on this one click i 
Well, that's good. Definitely getting some movement there. So we're getting dashboard lights here. Now, one of those bulbs is actually got the wire cut, so I'm not surprised we're only getting light on one side, but that's a good sign. I've hooked up this um, hazard light switch here. And that's good. We can see that both of those bulbs are working, although, albeit that's not very green. So we might have to paint that or do something there. We're just about to do another test moving these light bulbs along because we've got a couple of bulbs missing. When a disaster struck, it transpires that just when you thought nothing else could go wrong with this car, somebody previously has snapped off this little stud here and glued it on, but not very well because it just came off in our hands. And the thing is that stud is crucially important because it determines where the plug goes. And if you get it wrong, you can muck the whole cluster up. So what we're gonna do is super glue that back on and then continue just to test. But I think this is actually looking good, this cluster. I'm gonna leave this video here. Um, I'm pretty confident that all the electrics on that cluster are now working. We won't be able to fully test the speedo and oil pressure gauge and all the rest of it until the engine's actually working. And we just need to procure one more light bulb for the um, low fuel light. And then that will be ready to go. And then we are gonna move on. We're gonna put in the central console, which we've just been restoring and painting um, and sort out all the electrics and probably we haven't quite decided what we're going to do with the trim yet but i'll probably go for it horribly expensive wood um and then it'll be on to the seats the leather seat covers for this car should arrive in the next few days so we'll be taking the seats out we trimming them and then it will be on to seeing whether this car actually starts we'll have to install the fuel tank hook up the fuel sender put all the fuel lines in um, so that will be interesting and obviously test that little ECU unit down there as well to see if that's working. But I'm going to leave this video here and I'll just leave a quick link to where you can get those light bulb holders from should you need to get any for your cluster. If any of your dash cluster light bulbs aren't working and you need a new holder, Euro make them. That's the part number 0055504019 and you can get from these guys here, Rock Auto. They're not cheap, £7.50. That's probably plus VAT and all the rest of it, but um, that's an awful lot cheaper than getting them from Mercedes, for example. If you do need to paint your needles orange, you can use this stuff here, Tamiya Acrylic Mini Paints. Not expensive, £1.85 from eBay. Um, that's the stuff to use there.